Hello, my fellow Elden Lords. Today I'll be showcasing my version of the Death Knight. So far, this is my favorite, as I love how fun it feels. It's very versatile and open compared to the War Mage build. Uh, before we get into it, I'd like to remind everyone, if you enjoy my type of Elden Ring content, make sure to turn on notifications so you'll be notified when I pop them out. Anyway, for all my necromancer lovers out there, I am proud to showcase the Death Knight. We represent those who live in death. And to do that, we have three very distinct playstyles, weapons and gear. The options I have for this build include two-handed, dual-wielding, and a flail and shield combo with many options for ranged attacks, including on horseback, so you can really get the feeling of being an undead knight galloping across the land, slaying the living because they refuse to eat your magic plant. So your primary stats for this build are vigor, and depending on what type of knight you want to be, your other primary will either be dexterity or strength. Your secondary stats are intelligence, mind, and endurance. Though to be honest, endurance should probably be a primary, but I don't like having more than two of those. So, uh, your intelligence is only here so you can wield the weapons for your build. Uh, I advise leaving intelligence alone until you are close enough to obtain your next main weapon. Until then, just level your endurance so you have the stamina to wield your greatswords. Uh, upgrade mind at your leisure as well, as mind is only there so you can actually use the magic from your weapons. So if you don't have the weapon, don't upgrade mind. Uh, so the reason you either have str strength or dexterity is because there is a scythe weapon you can get early in the game. Uh, as early as the RNG gods allow you, of course. All your weapons except the scythe scale with dexterity. The scythe is the only thing here that scales with strength. Sure, you can change it to dex, but you'll be worse off as, as it takes forever to reach a decent damage. So if you want to stick with the scythe for a long time, go strength. If you want to eventually leave it behind for the other weapons, go dex. But I don't recommend going both as you're just wasting points. So the main meat of the Death Knight is that you will go around the land collecting all the death themed weapons and armor in the game. They are all special and beautiful in their own way. You will be obtaining Death's Poker, a great sword, Death Ritual Spear, and family heads. No, it's not an orgy. Your armor will be the royal remains, which you get from Ensha at the round table. And I will show you how to get everything except the ritual spear, because none of my characters are at the snowy area. Uh, I reached, uh, I'm on journey two, and I didn't think about it. I can't even get it myself, but my other character does have it. So you will get to see. Now, when you start your game, I recommend choosing the Vagabond because their stats are pretty even when it comes to what you need to upgrade. I made my knight all pale and gave him huge muscles to really fill out the armor and look intimidating. I kind of went with a Cardinal and Copia look for his eyes as well. If you have Ghost, you have everything. So once you start playing, you have Sword, Shield, and a Halberd. If you want, you can stick with what you have and just wait until you're strong enough to get Death's Poker, or you can start investing points to get the Scythe. You will need 17 Strength and 13 Dexterity in order to use it. The Scythe does bleed damage and has a sweet spinning slash that's great for bosses. I use the Scythe to take down Margot and Gondrick, but for Gondrick I actually applied a Poison Ash of War so the scythe does less damage but applies poison and hopefully bleed at the same time for stacking damage but i couldn't get the bleed to brock so if you want to just use the scythe there are many fun options for it if you just want to use the weapons you have on go for it because you'll be practicing with them until you throw them out for something better i do recommend however 
that you get the flail from the carriage at the start of the game and use that for a while. It scales with dexterity and is perfect for mounted horse combat. I sold mine and highly regret it because you can't buy items back. Uh, so right now I'll show you exactly how to get the Grave Scythe and then show you how to get your armor so you can look the part at the very start. Uh, past Godric's castle, before you enter the lake area, there's a Church of Merica with a graveyard outside. This graveyard has about three skeleton keepers and you'll have to farm these enemies until one of them finally drops the scythe. It is also the heaviest scythe in the game so it's slow, and it, has, it, it uses a lot of stamina. For some people, it can take 30 minutes, others less. So you'll be here for a while. After you finally get the weapon, you'll be going into the lake proper and journeying to the village of the Albanorix. Uh, take a look at my map so you can get a grasp of the area, but we're heading there right now. Once you get there and pass the grace, there's a hill with a dude who uses fire magic. You can kill him or ignore him, but regardless, further up the hill is a glowing pot. That you can either roll or attack just one time. Don't overdo it or you'll screw it up. The pot is actually a dying old man. Congrats, you abused the elderly. Anyway, listen to what he has to say before he dies and he'll give you a medallion fragment. They'll ask you to give it to Latena, but for now, you're going to get ready for a fight. Once you have access to the round table, go there with the medallion and you'll face off against Ensha. Take him out to dinner and poison his food, or just murder him outright. But afterwards, go to the back of the round table towards Gideon's room, and you can take his armor and finally become a Death Knight. Now you may notice you obtained a weapon. Sadly, that weapon uses arcane. So if you want to use it, go for it, but level arcane at your discretion. Now that you have the armor, this is where the build takes a break. Go ahead and use what you got. Explore the world, level up vigor, endurance, strength or dex, and take out the first two bosses. Uh, if you want that poison ash of war, I'll show you now. It is located in Kaled, on the Lake of Rot, closer to the eastern part. Uh, a disappearing scarab is holding it. Just give him a few knocks and he'll give you the cheese. Now, poison and bleed scale with arcane. So the higher that is, the faster you'll apply those effects. But this build doesn't level that unless you want it to. This build is very versatile in the path you want to take. If you want to switch it up for poison, switch your leveling to strength and arcane for primary, and vigor endurance for second. Uh, scaling is kind of insane at the moment of this video, so if you're interested in doing that, you won't be disappointed. But if you're sticking to the idea of upgrading your arsenal, keep investing, like I said earlier. Uh, vigor, mainly. Uh, don't forget dex. Uh, intelligence and mind when you need it. Uh, remember to play with your shield, two-hand your weapon, all that. When you feel ready and you want your next main weapon, go back to Kaled anyway because there is a death bird which is holding your new weapon. The site of grace you need is on the eastern side below Celia Town of Sorcery. Wait there until night and the boss is up the hill across from you. These birds are no joke. They use area frost attacks and mean melee with a sick beak finisher. Uh, try to stay behind them and back off when you can, uh, especially when they start using their magic. If you can tank the hits, go for it. Otherwise, dodge them and try to go for heavy attacks. 
for critical. Uh, another strategy is you can take him out onto the road, lure him over there, and the troll up on top of the cliff can throw down pots. If you're good enough, the pots will hit the boss and you can kill him that way. But be very careful that this boss is serious business. Do not immediately go there expecting it to be easy. This bird is a beast and will wipe the floor with you. But eventually, you can kill it. Don't go there level 28 with 25 vigor and 18 dexterity and come here telling me it's impossible. This is something you need to work for with time and patience. Once this bird is dead, you'll be rewarded with Death's Poker, which has some beautiful magic attacks. You need 15 strength, 17 dexterity, and 11 intelligence to use this weapon. It requires somber smithing stones. Now the way you use this sword is like any other, but I advise weaving your magic attacks into your combos. By holding down your skill button, you reach forward with a ball of frost and eventually it explodes. If you hold it and press your light attack, you will launch the ball forward and it leaves a blanket of frost on the ground. If you hold it and press the heavy attack, you slam the ball into the ground and it explodes. This sword is basically explosive ghost flame in a weapon. That death sorcery spell I showcase is used much better on this weapon than it is as a spell. You can open your attack by just holding skill, and then when it explodes you start wailing on your enemy inflicting frost damage which reduces damage absorption by 20%. So when enemies are frozen, they take more damage. Frost levels with intelligence, so don't forget that's a secondary stat. Now if you don't remember or even know how to two-hand a weapon, uh, hold down your action button that lets you talk, and then press your attack button. Do it again to cancel the two-hand. Uh, I recommend two-handing the greatsword for a 50% increase in strength, but you can also use a shield if you like. Uh, now that you have your first mainline weapon, here's where things get even better. We're going to increase your damage output even more by getting you an undead army and some archers to back you up. Here's where we get you summons. Now there are two types of playstyles for summoning. You can either use skeletons so you can mob enemies, or you can use archers to pick your enemies off while you wail on them. You're the commander of the dead, the living bow before you. So we're going to get your skeleton summons first. In order to do that, you need to hunt down some sailors and steal their booty. There is one east of Limgrave and another on the eastern side of the Liernia Lakes. Now you might be wondering, how are we representing those who live in death when we're murdering them all the time? Well, that's the thing about being an enforcer for your people. Sometimes it's your job to weed out the weak. You need to make sure your people can stand up for themselves. If you can just walk all over there and bitch slap them without a fight, you don't need them representing you. So go on over to these locations Make sure you stand behind them and smack them around as they summon your friends to make them look like they're actually trying. Avoid their airy attack, and that's really it. Pushovers. Once you get these skeletons, they should be able to fight for themselves. If they die, they just come back, as long as the, area, uh, the enemy doesn't use an airy attack, which is something every enemy has, so count your blessings. If you feel like you want to switch up your playstyle and want your summons to pick enemies off from afar, you have several options. You have marionette soldiers, Latena, who we mentioned earlier, and actual archers. 
the marionette soldiers are located in Rhea Academy. I'll show you. Latena is near the starting area of the lake, requires a boss, and the archers are located in Nokron, the Eternal City. I do not have those, as my character has not reached that location yet, but I will leave a link down below so you'll know exactly where those archers are. They are archers, and I don't know how well they are. There is, uh, I believe, one more archer character. Uh, you get them from Saluvis. They're a puppet. Uh, this archer, I, I, don't, I don't remember their name, but Saluvis is part of Ronnie's questline. Um, anyway, his puppet I do not recommend. Uh, sure, he launches sleep arrows, but he misses quite frequently. And he doesn't fire very often, so I would not recommend him. Just, just stick with the marionettes. Uh, Latena or the archers uh, if you find them. Anyway, uh, I prefer the marionette soldiers for small to medium arenas as they fire fast and have the potential to stun lock an enemy. Uh, not actually like do a critical but kind of like keep them in place uh, if the enemy is small enough. If you have a large arena or you're in the open world, I, I would use Loretta as she does not tend to move. Whenever you summon her, she tends to stay there. She might roll around a little, but she is mostly a sniper tower and not a mobile gunship. Now, if you want something a little extra for long range, here's a shout out to Bjarni Valur for letting me know about this little dude. In Lanskiar Ruins, at the start of the lake, is a tiny bell that you can seamlessly use on horseback. It uses FP and the damage isn't too high, but if you want to feel like a horseman delivering the message of death, this should do it. Now there are two more weapons you can get a hold of for this build. The next is the Family Heads Flail. Shout out to Toto Ryuchi for showing me this one. You can get this in the Altus Plateau. You can get there pretty early by going through the secret tunnel in Liernia of the Lakes and killing the Magma Worm Boss for a trophy, or by going the legit easier way and just using the elevator like a normal person. Either way, the flail is located in a cave being held by a grieving actual necromancer. Yes, there is a legit necromancer in this game, the only one I've seen so far. 
and he has a giant undead snail for a pet. It, it it's so cute. You will relieve this person of his pain and take his weapon, which also has some nice ranged magical attacks. You can just keep spamming this as it's similar to Rancor Call, as it just shoots out balls of black fire. In order to use this, you will need 8 strength, 16 intelligence, and 18 dexterity. Here is where you will be using the flail and shield combo with the bonus of long range. Now you have another way to play and switch it up at your leisure. Your final weapon, the Death Ritual Spear, near the end game on the snowy mountain tops, past the capital. I will leave a link down below to give you more information on it, as all my characters are nowhere near that area. <laughs> my apologies. Uh, I do have the weapon on my highest level character, but he's on Journey 2, so he's not even there anymore, but he does have the weapon. Uh, for this weapon, you will need 14 strength, 20 dexterity, and 18 intelligence. Once you get to 18 intelligence, you can choose to stop leveling intelligence or keep going if you want to increase the magic damage and you feel you have enough endurance. Death Ritual Spear is amazing and, in my opinion, the best of all these weapons. It still has a long range attack, but this can hit multiple enemies. Your final combo has arrived. Now that you have the spear, you will be dual wielding the spear in the right hand with Death's poker in your left. Your combo will be to open your attack with your magic spear and then wail into enemies with your great sword inflicting frost damage and then finish them off with the spear. So it'll be skill from the spear, left, 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 and then a final right attack. It might, it might sound like you're mostly using the sword, but that's kind of the point, as for some reason your sword is faster using this method compared to using it normally. Uh, it might be the animation is faster in the left hand, or maybe because you have two weapons i'm not sure why but the great sword feels faster this way uh, this combo means you can pick off your targets at a long range and then weaken them at short while finishing them with your spear this is my favorite combo it it's amazing it feels great i'm sure you'll love it when you finally get there use any of these three combos whenever you feel like it along with your summons switch it up for the right situation as some bosses might be easier with the particular one. Just like that bird for Death's Poker. Uh, I was having a hard time trying to get it for this build as I have it on my other character. Uh, I would recommend, you know, going on horseback, getting a few hits in with your flail as that has a really fast attack. Uh, if you tried to use your greatsword, you'd probably just die. So having the right combo for the right enemy is very important and that that's why it's great that you have so many different combos to choose from for Death Knight. Uh, now that you have all your weapons and armor there is one more piece of equipment I would like to suggest. I'm not going over a large list of crystal tears and talismans this time as I did with the War Mage. Uh, they had a list that's good for every character and you can check out the links for them, but for this night theme build centered on dexterity, I do feel you should get one specific talisman. The Lance Talisman uh, is a talisman that enhances your attacks while on horseback. Dexterity does the same thing, so if you use this talisman, you're boosting your ability to dominate and become a true death knight, galloping across the land trying to promote your vegan lifestyle. Would you like some death root? Hmm? Eat it, it's good for you! This talisman can be found at the beginning of the game, past Storm Mill Shack, up a hill, and past the bridge you can see on your Mac going horizontal. It's... it's right here, buddy. 
And that'll be it for my Death Knight build. Quite long, but this is one of my favorites because of how versatile it is. Uh, and I really do hope you guys enjoy it as well. Uh, if there's a build idea you have that you'd like to see me, uh, my bad, if there's a build idea that you have that somebody hasn't done yet, like a specific weapon combo, or just something that you feel should be explored, please let me know down below. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. We can make something beautiful together. Uh, I did this all the time when I was playing Resident Evil Resistance. People would tell me their builds. i just showcase them for everybody, and then I'd play a little with them. So if you want to include yourself in that, please go right ahead. Let's form a community around this and just, you know, give it all this game really has. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a great day.